So we've got a 23 centimeter loose bottom tart tin. This one is from Sainsbury's and basically I've just sprayed it with a bit of oil and this is really important. You want a piece of non-stick baking parchment, so silicon coated ideal, um, and the oil just helps grab it. If you notice as well, there's a little flap of paper sticking up. This will help you grab it later without having to dig around for it and literally just slide the tart off. Okay, so the pastry, I've cheated. It's half a block of ready-made short crust. Um, if you want to make your own pastry, that's fine. Most important thing is pull it out of the fridge an hour before you want to use it. Lots of flour to stop it sticking. It won't dry the pastry out. It'll be fine. And you can see the first thing I'm doing is I'm just tapping it out um, to basically flatten it a bit. Now, if you do that, it'll stop it cracking. And the key to rolling pastry is even pressure. So I'm using a plastic rolling pin, a more catering one. You can buy these online. Um, they don't get grotty or smelly or full of you know whatever you've been rolling out previously so they wash really easily and they're really heavy as well so um, and they're totally rigid you can see I'm putting lots of flour on the pastry and I keep flicking it over and you can see there's no problem with it it's nice and soft because it's it's been out for an hour and just using even pressure you can roll it out and keep it to a square shape and what I'm doing is I'm basically rolling it bigger than the tin including the sides and don't be afraid to keep dusting it. That really is the key to rolling pastry. Um, and keep lifting it and giving it a little shake because pastry always pulls back on itself as well. You know, it, it tends to want to shrink. So if you just give it a little uh, move every now and again, it just lets it relax. So you can see I'm going to put my tin on and the pastry is probably nearly there. Now, the thickness of pastry, you can go as thin as you dare. I like really thin pastry. Um, if you're learning and you're doing this for the first time, you can use a bigger block and do it to about the thickness of a pound coin, but I really like it really thin, and it looks fantastic when, you, when it's been baked and you slice it. So I'm probably about two millimetres thick here, if that. Um, again, which is fine. Now, what you can see here is I'm just knocking off the excess pastry off the corners and don't throw them away. I'm going to basically put them back into a little ball and we're going to use that um, for the rest of the process. Now, the easiest way of getting your pastry into the tin is not to put it on your rolling pin, but to actually give it a dusting and fold it in half and in half again. And it won't stick together, it won't break, it'll be fine. And then put the point, so you can lift it now, it's really easy. Put the point in the middle of the tin and unfold it. There you go, nice and hassle-free and stress-free. Now, this bit is really important. You need to use the excess around the edges and drop them into the tin. So don't pull it out from the bottom. Use the excess and let it fall in uh, because otherwise the pastry case will shrink. So we're using the excess to make sure that the pastry is nice and loose in the tin itself. So I'm just going to work, you know, work my way around with my fingers before we get the ball of pastry and really knock it into the ridges of the tin. So you can see there, I just use my fingers to get it roughly in place. Now I'm getting that ball of excess pastry, I'm dipping it in flour, and then what I do is I lift up the excess and push downwards. So you're pushing the excess down into the corners of the tin, down into the base, and you get a really defined shape on your pastry. And also it will stop it from shrinking too much. I mean, pastry tends to shrink a little bit anyway, but doing this, you know, gives you real success and a really nice looking tart at the end of it. So just work your way around, keep dusting it in flour, and you can see it's really hassle-free and really easy to do. Okay, so the next stage is now, I see some people at this stage um, getting rid of the excess pastry and that's just about the worst thing you could do because what pastry does as it bakes is that it wants to shrink. 
So you can see all I'm doing here is just folding it over gently, making sure I don't break it. Um, again, the pastry is soft, so it's fine. So just loosely fold it over the sides and leave it. We're going to get rid of it later. Now use a fork and prick the base all over and be firm, you know, and don't be worried about doing lots of them. This will stop the pastry inflating later on, but I'm going to show you another trick about that anyway. But this is just a really good way of giving you a nice flat base. And don't bin the excess pastry ball. We're going to need that again later on. So just leave it on the side or pop it in a bit of cling film. So you can see there, we've got all the little holes that the fork has made. And next thing we want to do is have a quick tidy up. If you haven't got a bench scraper, which is the tool I'm using there, really good tool for baking generally for doing bread and having a quick clean up now at this point i'm going to put my pastry in the case onto a baking tin so we can get it ready to go in the oven now the oven has been warming up for about 45 minutes to an hour at just over 200 c fan setting so we'll come back to that shortly now this is the bit that kind of everyone's a bit surprised about we're going to use cling film rather than parchment or foil and the reason we use cling film is that a it's oven safe and b it's non-stick and finally it gets right into the case it's fantastic for blind baking with believe it or not this will be fine in the oven so you can see what i do is i overlay three sheets and it just means that it gives me a bit of thickness later for when I'm lifting out the beans that I use. So lay them on loosely and then use your fingers just to push the air out and get the cling film right down into the base of the, the pastry and around the edges. Next tip for you, get your baking ceramic beans and chuck them in the bin because they are pretty useless. To get a perfect pastry case, we need to fill that with something small and heavy. And I use mung beans, which are just dried, but they're small and they've got some weight to them. And I've had this jar of them for years. So all I'm doing there, fill it up. You know, you want it sort of just below the rim of the tin. And you can see they're really small and perfect for blind baking. As well as mung beans, you could also use rice as well. The cling film will stop them going on the pastry and you can see what they're doing is uh, just by patting them gently it gets down into every nook and cranny and it will hold the pastry in place perfectly. Just bring the cling film over now and that is ready to go in the oven. Now I've had the oven warming up for about an hour at 220C with the fan setting on. I use a hot stone. Now that sounds really posh and fancy. What it is is a, is a marble cutting board that I bought from a supermarket. Cheap as chips, about £14. Took the rubber feet off and you've got the perfect baking stone. Having a hot stone in the oven ready will mean that the base of your pastry cooks really well and it will give you a crisp base and no soggy bottom. Now, what I've done there is I reduced the temperature to 190 I've popped the pastry case in there in the tin and now I've set the timer for about 26 minutes. If you noticed as well, I was quite high up in the oven, so just above the middle, we want to get some serious heat into it. Now, don't worry if the edges get too dark, the bits of pastry that we can see, because we're going to chop those off anyway. Now, here you can see how fantastic the cling film and the mung beans are. So it's nicely baked. It looks like it's got good colour, but it actually hasn't because the cling film on the mung beans will have stopped the pastry inside the case from getting any colour on it. But you can see there, it looks fantastic already. Now, the next thing we're going to do, I've just got a little skewer here. I'm going to put two holes in the base, which you might think is crazy because we're going to fill this with a really wet mixture, for example, um, a, a custard tart or a lemon tart or something like that and the holes are lethal but doing two holes at this stage will stop the base inflating when we pop it back in the oven to get some colour into it and we're going to patch those up later anyway so 
I've left it out for about 10 minutes, which is really important after taking the mung beans out. I've made the two holes and now it's back in the oven again for about, I don't know, I always do about five or six minutes, something like that. Now, what will happen now is the inside of the case will start to dry out and get a bit of colour as well. So it'll give us a nice crisp case. So there you go. So five minutes later, you can see it's just started to get a bit of colour. And I'm going to use some of our little excess pastry while the case is still hot. I'm just going to melt a bit of pastry in my fingers. I'm going to just plug the two holes. Simple as that. So if you just literally pop it in there while it's hot, it'll melt and set as you're doing it. And I promise you, they won't leak. Finally, we're going to waterproof our pastry case. And what that means is we're going to brush it with a beaten egg. Now, I've put some salt in the egg and whisked it up. And what the salt does, if you look at the egg there, it kind of makes it really runny and slightly clarified. So it makes it really easy to brush on. Now, doing this will not only help plug your holes, um, which won't leak anyway, but it's just a bit of extra insurance, but it does give you a perfectly crisp base. So if you're new at doing this, I would recommend doing the, the egg wash. If you've done this lots of times, to be honest, you don't really need the egg wash. It'll, it'll be absolutely fine, but it's just a bit of extra insurance. So pop the egg wash on, and then we're going to go back in the oven again on the hot stone. The oven is still at 190C for a few minutes just to dry that egg wash out and it will make the case perfectly waterproof. So after a couple of minutes, our egg wash has now dried and set, and you can see we've got an absolutely perfect pastry case. It looks crisp, it's dry, it's got a little bit of color inside, and the outside will be perfectly baked. So finally, to get it ready for the filling, we can now knock off the excess pastry that is hanging around the edges. What you need to do this is a really sharp, non-serrated knife. And all you do is just shave around the edge and just use the tin to guide you. So just very gently shave around the edge, keep your hand away, obviously, keep your hand on the opposite side. And you can see just by gently shaving, the sides will start to drop off and you end up with an absolutely perfect pastry case. So thank you very much for watching my tutorial on how to blind bake pastry. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you use this technique lots. Don't forget to check out my other videos and there is also a follow-up video to this of an egg custard in that exact shell just to prove that it works perfectly. And who doesn't like an egg custard? Thanks a lot. Bye.